Okay, folks, welcome to a bright and sunny day in Thailand, and my whole day has been bright and sunny from the arrival of my lithium batteries. I finally, after all of this, have lithium batteries to upgrade my bike. This is 280 21700 cells from GSL Energy in Shenzhen. And they just arrived. And it's a bit of an unusual package. But let me open it up and we'll see how they look. So inside that woven material, there's two separate cardboard boxes. This one is, is very light. And this one is insanely heavy. <laughs> so let me pop them open. Oh, and I can see them. Here they are. 21700, if we can read anything on the barcode. Okay. Awesome. So it looks like they, they come in these smaller packages. So let me pull them all out. There should be 280 altogether. Okay, we've got 64 in a box, four boxes, plus another 24 makes 280. So we're right on the money. Oops. Here we are. LR21705A and a serial number. So let's check out with the voltmeter and see what they're sitting at. Back in the days when I was going to do the 18650s, I built up this little testing platform that then plugs into this battery tester and balancer device. But I can't use this one, and I couldn't find any 21700 holders, so I 3D printed one and then built up this new platform for, for 21700s. But I had a little bit of a, an adherence problem in CAD. So I got to work on that and build that up. And then I'll be able to run the cells through the test process. Okay, so out of the box from the factory, we're at 3.484 volts, which is good. Right in the sweet spot of the cell. Um, and I just need to finish building that testing platform and I can run it through that machine. So signing off for now, happy with a box full of batteries, moving forward on my new battery pack. Okay, here's the detail on my order. You can see GSL Energy from Shenzhen. This is a follow-up to the meeting I had with them at the electric vehicle show in Bangkok. I walked past their booth. They had a lot of uh, lithium cells on display. Got into a conversation with one of the managers, Jim, who was very, very helpful. Ah, here he is, Jim Deng. Very helpful. We were, within five minutes, we were sketching out the requirements for my battery pack in series and parallel and currents and voltage and trying to fit them into the space inside the battery box in the bike. And now I've got the batteries. It's fantastic. So you can see they're 21700 format, standard lithium voltage of 3.7, capacity of 4000 milliamp hours, which is deliciously high, uh, as opposed to 18650s, about the best you can get for a real battery is about 3400. So I think the 4000 here is comfortably within the capabilities of a 21700 cell. So, and I ordered 280 of them. 240 will eventually be my full pack size, but I ordered two lots of 20 more than that so I can make two more modules or have some spares left over. And the price of US dollar 198 is just an incredible price. I'm very, very happy with that. And it cost $85 to ship the box from Shenzhen to Bangkok, right? 
Then I made contact with their warehouser in Bangkok and they shipped them to my door, to my condo for $9. So I'm looking at $648.40 for almost four kilowatt hours of 21700 lithium batteries, which is just fantastic. Now let me pop over and show you the spec sheet for the cells. Okay, here's the spec sheet. Let's just scroll down a little bit. IFR 21700. That's good. Table of contents. This is actually a typo. They must have done a copy and paste from the 18650 spreadsheet, uh, spec sheet, but that's okay. So 21 by 70, perfect. And here's the technical parameters. This is what we care about. So the standard capacity, 4,000 milliamp hours, and that is at 0.5 C. Now in the world of lithium batteries, the C represents the capacity of the battery, so 4,000 milliamp hours. The 0.5 C here refers to the how much current you can put in it in the charging phase. So it's one half of the capacity. So we're allowed to put in two amps of uh, current into the battery for it to safely charge, which is good. Um, it's got a range of capacity due to manufacturing pluses and minuses, which is good. Standard voltage. Uh, the cutoff voltage, where you never want to go higher, is 4.2 volts, which is standard in the world of lithium batteries. Discharge cutoff voltage, you never want to go, go below this value, 2.75, which is also standard for lithium batteries. Although in practice, Going between 2.75 and 4.2 is very, very hard on the battery. So most designers of battery packs like to stay within the range. So we might, I might only set up my system to go between 2.9 volts or even 3 volts up to 4.0 volts or 4.1 volts. Uh, 700 cycle charges uh, design life which is fantastic and at after you've charged it and discharge it 700 times at 100% depth of charge so you're hammering the battery at its maximum limits it will still have at least 70% of its capacity left which is 2400 milliamps which is fantastic the most you ever want to discharge out of the battery is 3C, which would represent 12 amps, which is just insane current coming out of a tiny little battery like that. And you can even pulse discharge it at 20 amps for up to 5 seconds without damaging it. But you do not want to push these limits. Absolutely don't want to get close to those limits. Scrolling down, they're giving us the characteristics of the battery, which is always good to see. This is the graph that you use to look at your charging. And if we look at this green bar right here, this represents the constant current phase of the charge. When you're charging the battery, you want to put a constant amount of current into the cell. And this is what this green line represents over time. From the start of the charge to here, we're, we want to put 0.5 C worth of current into the battery. And so we're looking at the scale on the right-hand side. And this is coming in right at 0.5. When, we, when the uh, cell reaches the capacity right here, and uh, the charger detects that we have reached 4.2 volts, then the charger would switch to the constant voltage time of the charge, now we're looking at this red bar and we want to put 4.2 volts into the battery until we reach this point which is when the battery is full the blue line represents how much energy the battery is accepting so we're at constant current 
and the battery is <clears throat> receiving more and more energy, we approach the point where we hit our switch over from constant current to constant voltage and the the energy that the battery receives starts to flatten out until it reaches a reaches an asymptote or a point where it cannot accept any more energy and that's where the charge stops this is very characteristic of uh, lithium cell charging strategy and that's why uh, it kind of makes sense to stop charging about here because for all this extra time, we're only getting a very small amount of extra energy that's going into the cell. So not only do we save time in the charging if we stop here, but we also reduce the stress limits on the cell by not charging it up all the way. We're going to stop at around 4.1, 4.15 volts is this point right here. Okay, now let's look at the discharge characteristics. And you can see that they've got several lines, and these all represent different discharge uh, amounts. So at 1C, which would be 4 amps, that's this light blue line, and it's kind of in the middle of the range, which is about where we want to be. We don't want to uh, over discharge the battery but we don't want to throw some of the power of the battery away for fast acceleration and sustained high-speed riding so if we discharge at 1c we're right in here you can see the voltage drops off a little bit at the start and then very gradually decreases and then they all start going south here at 100 percent discharge if we look at the red line 0.2c that would mean we're discharging at 0.8 amps and we're getting the longest uh, amount of energy out of the battery but even then it still drops off at the end so right around here is where the effective uh, bottom of the the uh, the discharge of the cell is and we won't don't want to go any lower than this and that's about 95 percent on this scale. Even 90% is about a good place to stop. If we look at the 3C discharge, which is uh, 12 amps, you can see the voltage drops off quite a bit right from the start, and then we uh, hit our bottom limit at 80%. Now this is really mistreating the cell. We don't want to discharge anywhere near this uh, for the good of the battery. So that's I'm going to go on the blue line right here. I'm going to set my system up so I'm right about 1C discharge or 4 amps per module. They also give us some temperature uh, data and the, the life of the cell. You can see after 300 full blasts, charge and discharge cycles, we're still at 90% of the life. 300 charges for me would probably be two years of really hard riding, everyday riding around town, even three years, four years of casual riding. So that's that's very good. Then they've got some safety notes. Uh, you know, they, what they've done is these are their, their testing protocols, their overcharge protocol. This is how they perform on the battery, and they expect it to not explode and not be on fire. So they're beating the crap out of the cells by overcharging, over-discharging, short-circuiting them, and abusing them thermally at 130 degrees Celsius. And they expect no explosion and no fire as a result of their testing protocols. Dropping on the ground from one meter, heavy impact of a steel rod in the middle of the battery, hitting it with a 10 kilogram hammer, an extrusion test of pressing it between uh, in a press up to 13 kilonewtons for one minute, and it still won't explode. So, for the people who talk about the uh, how physically easy it is to damage one of these batteries, no, you can squeeze them, you can drop them, you can smash them, and they're still good. The only thing you don't want to do is overcharge them or over discharge them because then you're actually messing 
with the, the way the chemistry works inside the cell. So overall, I'm very happy with everything about this cell and I'm looking forward to building my pack. So big thanks to Jim at GSL and let's go. As you stare out on my beach, I would ask you to subscribe to my channel and click like on this video so YouTube thinks I'm worthy again. And I have so many people on my channel that they'll give me 10 cents a day in ad revenue. So I thank you for that.